I'm ready. Well, let's do this. Okie doke. Yeah. All right, here we go. The T-bone. <laughs> And chick fruit. Let's God bless <laughs> all these years. Just get it right one time. What do you want from me? Forty years they've been trying. You couldn't fire somebody if they were horrible, doing a terrible job for the veterans. And now you can say you're fired. <laughs> okay. No one listens to radio. And now for a quick disclaimer: the T-bone and chick fruit show is brought to you by nobody. We have no sponsors. The show is still rated G for glorious. I like that opening. <laughs> it's fun. It is fun. God bless. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I, I like, like it. It's all the time. It's us. It's us in a nutshell. It's us one hundred percent. I have been toying with the idea, and I think you saw it, of uh, getting away from the T-Bone and Chick Brew show and re- rebranding the show Lunds B with T-Bone and Chick Brew. I like it. I saw the t-shirts. I was a fan. Let me know when, when we're going to buy those. Well, the benefit, the benefit of Lunds B is, apparently, I didn't know this, apparently it's a, it's a name in Thailand. Because if you search for Lunds B, you're going you're gonna to find a couple of people in Thailand. But if you search the hashtag Lunsby, you find us. It's nothing but us. Boom, 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 boom. So we we definitely own it. We we just haven't own owned it. And you know, as I think about things that I want to do, like um, a personalized tag, Lunsby is easy to do. Whereas yeah. the T Bone and Chipper Show, it's a little lengthy. It is. I like it. I'm I'm not opposed to chain. Uh, okay. All right. Well, we'll. As long as I don't have to be the one implement it, I'm here for it. Right. But I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if there's anything in the opening that we really need to change. First I of all, so I either. worked really hard on that opening. I want to go. Oh, I do say the T-Bone and Chick Brew show. I do. Oh, I don't want to redo that. We have talented people that listen. By the way, last week's episode, a fleet of sex dolls. Uh, that was a that was a great episode for us. So we got a lot of downloads on that one. So there's that. <laughs> I'm curious. Super. I'm curious how many people clicked on that one just because of the title. Whereas the week before, we, we did it. <laughs> the week before, it was something that was just disgusting. It was, I don't know, baloney and meat sauce. I don't know what the heck it was. I don't remember. Hey, these people love their bologna. What can I say? I'm about to uh, send you something because I don't send you stuff at all, ever. He's not sending a sex Ha ha. <laughs> he, he means, I hope he means <laughs> a picture on the internet. I hope it's a safe. That, that is what we'll be discussing when we get to that segment. Oh. Yes. Yes. Red uh, dicks. Got it. <laughs> I noticed the, uh, yeah, I noticed that too. <laughs> so uh, so we'll move forward with uh, marketing using Lunsby as the new show name. And it's going to take me a while to, to adjust that maybe for all the old episodes too. But uh, yeah, it's no longer the T-Bone and Chick Brew show. It's now Lunsby with T-Bone and Chick Brew. It's official. I love it. We've done it. Uh, what size t-shirt do you want? Good talk. <laughs> <laughs> if ever there was proof that we never speak to each other, it will be in these intros where we're like, ah, yes, first business out of the way. are <laughs> still alive. And now the show. <laughs> the, the, the producer, very first thing she said when I was floating the idea is like, you talk to Christina about it. I was like, I will when we talk. <laughs> I mean, right? I do have one. Ask away, my friend. Why are you greens of a murderer living? What is happening here? I, I've been watching Dahmer. And that's that's how needed? That's what I need. I need. I mean, if you don't like it, I could change it. But you're the only person that can see it. So, you know, let me have my... I'm a little we concerned. Ask about it. There's nothing... There is nothing on my microphone uh, stand that is green. But for some reason, it... Uh, it gets blacked out a lot. It gets taken away a lot. I don't know. I, I know it's all about lighting. Dan Edgington was my, my video guy in, in Sicily, and he, he knew how to do the green screen lighting perfectly. Like, for me, I think, I don't know. I don't know why the, the microphone stand gets greened out, why I have green over my head when I've got great lighting above me and beside me. I'm, I'm doing all the things every YouTube video tells me I'm supposed to do. I shouldn't be flashing in and out like... Uh, the new version of Quantum Leap. Oh my gosh, I used to love that show. A lot of people love that show, You're my, myself included, but I didn't like the thought of a remake. I didn't know there was a remake. 
I like my bubble where I live, and things are sacred and safe. <laughs> we all we all know the the original. Those of you who do know the original Quantum Leap, it was uh, it was a fun show. Uh, physicist uh, trapped in a time loop that keeps bouncing into awkward situations. It was a fun show. Even if you look back on it now, it's still kind of fun. But the thought of them doing a remake of it kind of like, I hate the fact that Hollywood has no more original ideas. But I found myself a little bit of time on my hands this morning, and it was right there on the on the uh, splash screen. Like, you want to look at it now? And I'm like, all right, I'll look at it now. It's not a remake. It's a continuation of the original show. Huh. So okay. that, that was uh, interesting. And uh, three episodes in, I'm in. Okay. Well, then I will maybe give it a go. I won't commit to it because I don't like to commit to literally anything. So <laughs> if you had unlimited power to do anything you want, what would you do? We both have uh, dreams of being the president one day. If you were able to issue a presidential pardon, what would it be for? I like the newest one. Tell me about the newest one. Tell me how much you like the newest one. <laughs> I do like it. If, 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 if people can pay... If states can get money, tax money off of people buying pot, then all the people who are in jail for pot should be able to go free. So the taxpayers don't have to keep paying to keep them in jail. (laughs) So on the surface, like most things in Washington, D.C., on the surface, that sounds amazing, right? But it's not amazing. The moment this story popped on the morning news, the uh, producer looked at me and goes, what do you think about that? That's good, right? Uh... I, and I, I, I didn't really catch it. Then I kind of caught it, and I said, well, that's that's absolutely worthless. That does nothing at all. There is nobody, nobody in federal prison for mere possession. It, it, there's no one in federal prison for mere possession. No one. Zero. Oh, how do you know? I was like, because it's not a federal offense for mere possession. But he asked the states to also consider. So try he's just trying to set the example. He, he issued a pardon that affected zero people. Later proven true, and it's mentioned as like a side note in any news story you see. It's like, President Biden. No, I, don't see, I don't see news. President do Biden pardoned all the drug possession people. <laughs> And uh, and and it and it didn't affect anybody. It affected absolutely no one. It was the most virtue signaling thing the government could I ever love do. That for us, though. I mean, I love it. I feel like that's perfect. I don't want people to make. I don't want old people to make my decisions anymore. And I think he nailed it. I think he really nailed it. No one was affected. I wasn't affected. Perfect. That's the kind of decision I want old people to make for me. But I thought you didn't want old people to make any decisions for you. And then well, you're immediately agreeing with an well, old person it. making decisions. Like, that's, but that's the kind of decision I want to be made. Just a nothing burger. Not just a giant. I, yeah, I love that. I love that for us. I think that's great. I'm here for it. If Washington could just stay boring and keep making decisions like that, I think we'll be better off. My thing, uh, and I've been saying this for years, my thing is uh, right now, again, we're under a continuing resolution. We do not have a budget and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because we don't pay attention to the budgets to begin with. But I've always said whenever we go into a continuing resolution or whenever the government shuts down, nobody should get paid. Nobody. To include all the senators, all the representatives, and everybody else working in Washington, D.C., especially in the legislative branch, whose sole purpose in life is to do a budget. By law, they're required to do a budget, and they change the law because they're the legislative branch, and they can do that. I just, I wouldn't pay anybody. I don't want anybody getting any money until you get it figured out, and the budget's got to make sense. I don't think they should get the, all that good health care once they are finished serving. You're not working, you're not getting health care. But, you know, they made the rules and they are above our normal people rules. So that's just how it is. Maybe I should apply for a seat somewhere so I can get that good health care, whether or not I'm working. I love that. OK. Do it. What state? Yeah. Don't care. Can I be remote? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Why not? It's funny how you you get people like that. Right now we're going through our election cycle in the States and uh, Dr. Oz, 
is running here in Pennsylvania as the candidate against uh, some, some whack job. He'll, he'll win because he's popular and famous, but he's not from Pennsylvania. Just like Hillary Clinton wasn't from New York. Just like all of these, you know, high playing people that uh, come in to the picture that they're not from that area, but somehow they get elected to represent that area. Oh, okay. I can't do Texas. Like I, I, they wouldn't, I would never win. Why would you say that? Texas has changed, and it's no, changing. It it's changing more and more every day. Every day, no, another it, California no, person, <laughs> every day, another California person moves oh. to Texas, and every day it's moving slower and slower to the left. Which, which means that the people that have it now are just holding on so tight. <laughs> I think you'd do good in Texas. You just have to be in the right uh, place, like Austin. I'm from Austin, and I will tell you, it's not what it used to be. <laughs> It never is. It never is. It never is. Uh, we could invade it's so Spain. It's so hard to like, you know, <laughs> you, you, when you're a kid, they're like, you can never go home. You know, you hear that in all the, the movies and the books. You're like, whatever, get out of my way. I'm going home. And you go home, you're like, ah, this was awkward. A bad idea. <laughs> and I was talking with uh, this junior sailor at work the other day. He's like 19 years old. Bless his heart. He's <laughs> also from Texas. He's from like the Lufkin area, which is where my grandparents and stuff, where I used to go for, you know, weird holidays. <laughs> But I was talking with him, and he's like, <laughs> and now we are in a very modern home, uh, but not at a regular I'm seating level. I'm not doing we it to like distract mid, you. Mid-level, like <laughs> floating into the room. <laughs> Anyways, but, you know, he was like, he's like, oh, I, I want to go home. But he's like, but I don't want to go home. And I was like, it doesn't matter when you go home or how often you go home. The people that were doing the same thing when you left are doing the same thing when you get back. <laughs> And it's weird. The benefit of being a gypsy family uh, is we never stayed in one place for too long. You know, we we're a couple years here, a couple years there. We were moving every couple of years. So I don't have any deep seated roots. I couldn't go back to any town that I lived in and, you know, pick up where I left off. It's just I'm OK with that. Actually, I'm, uh, I when I see people who go to their 30, 40 year reunion and they're still talking to people that they talked to when they were a child. I'm like, get new friends, man. Rotate. Meet new people. How do you guys still have the same... How do you have enough in converse, like in com common to continue that conversation? I have my best friend. We've been best friends forever. We are partners in crime. But, like, sometimes I'll, like, you know, oh, I saw so-and-so, and I'm like, oh, my God, I totally forgot that person was ever even born. But it's interesting because the more you move around and the more you're around people that move around, it really opens things up because you could be, like, instead of always having to go home, you're like, I think I'm going to go to California and see this person. I think I'm going to go to Pennsylvania and see this person. And it just makes travel that much better. You're a good friend because I, I, I fail at doing stuff like that. I, ha I have been invited to do a retirement ceremony in the Washington, D.C. area in January-ish. I know my friend Jose, he's got to be creeping up on retirement. So whenever that happens, I got to make that trip down to Tennessee. I'll I'm go. super bummed, though. Why? Speaking of retirement, because the only chief I ever worked for and like the only chief that I was really like, I like you. <laughs> chief Williams, he's retiring like this week, 21 years. Obviously, I can't I can't be there because it's in Tennessee, <laughs> anywhere close to Tennessee this week. But shout out to him. Thanks, man. What's his name other than Chief Williams? No, we'll just call him Chief Williams. <laughs> uh, OK. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> good on you, Chief Williams. What, what, what was his rate? He was MC. All right. I do not know him, obviously. You know, he'll tell you all his good war stories. And <laughs> he's like kind of a dirtbag. <laughs> Wow. I love him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if this is what he, you say about your friends, he like worked hard and did his stuff, but like now he's like, I'm done. He's still good to his sailors, but he's he's not like Joe Navy. He's not like some of the other uh, chiefs that you and I, I know. Well, he, he does what he needs to do. He gets his job done. He treats people with dignity and respect and he keeps it moving. That, uh, that's all you need to do these days. That, that's, right. It's super easy. Yeah. But some people got to go the extra mile. and Got to make life difficult. Yeah, I hate, hate that. toxic <laughs> so leadership. Uh, Self-imposed punishment. Just constantly making things more difficult than they need to be. It's like a great uh, Rick and Morty quote, I think. It's like, let's let no, let's do it your way. The most difficult way possible. That seems like the best way. We used to have this, uh, like like hug in a school so weird to say that but it was like where you just kind of like went for one person would go for the ankle and the other person would go for your elbow and we called it the the easiest way oh give me a hug the easiest way because that's what the navy felt like to 
it's just let me all these understand steps this. To tie your shoes. Let me understand this picture. Give me a hug the easiest way, and then you would try to hug their ankle. <laughs> yeah, because you know that's that, how uh, that that's is, how it works. That is the military will, in a nutshell, right you will there. Tuck your you'll tuck your laces into your boots, but only tuck them to the left. <laughs> there are no so bridges. Weird. There are no bridges in the navy. <laughs> What is happening? Do you know that one about shoelaces and how you tie them? There are no bridges. Oh yeah, there are no bridges. Yeah, nowadays no, I one, can no never, one cares. I can never, I can never untie my boots. Or was it the uh, my neckerchief? Nope, I just pay to have those rolled because. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, never gonna happen. There's no th- these new uniforms as as wonderfully friendly as they are. There's really just no ownership anymore at all. There's no pressing there's no shining you know it's just it's just and and the result of that is you get exactly what you're you're giving you're giving them a wash and wear mentality so you're getting wash and wear sailors well the problem is is i don't think that all of them are doing the wash part also true or so then it's just literally wear and how bad is it how bad is it when someone shows up in two-toned camis they're like uh, the it's bottoms, me. those bottoms have definitely <laughs> seen new. way more sunlight than the top. OK, they are they are almost white and the top is dark. That is not a good look for you. That is bad. I know I have like I have one pair that's like my like perfectly worn in pair. And then I have like a hundred new pairs and I really don't want to put, I need to put the patch and I don't want, to. <laughs> but it, cause it doesn't matter. And, and you don't thing. have to cause no one's going to notice. I just wear the the same one. I wash it and I rewear it. It's fine. It has no ink left in it. No, there's no dye left in it. <laughs> but I okay. So here's the thing too. Did you see the new uniforms they're testing? I, Kill me. <laughs> I thought I saw something, but I immediately discarded it as a joke. It's not a joke. I have to see it's this not. again. Hold on one it's, sec. They all. It looks. Oh my god. Look up the khaki because that is hilarious and that makes me want to get. Uh, Switch branches, 100%. Switch branches of the military. (laughs) They all look like maternity clothes. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's just stop. Just stop. Why don't we... If you look, the Navy has more uniforms in one branch than all the other branches combined have uniforms. This task force uniform should have been disbanded 30 years ago or 20 years ago or whenever Uh, they set it up. That... Terribly. You look stupid. Yep. It's terrible. It's super bad super super bad it's embarrassing it's just embarrassing don't they look like maternity clothes well aren't they i think they're prison clothes they are prison clothes blue and khaki yes yeah. can't wait can't wait to see the chiefs when, walking around in it when they initially chief. when they initially <laughs> proposed this one of the models was a, a, a former sailor of mine there in uh, in rota she had gone on she was working in a brig and uh, they, yeah, I think the the initial model was the new brig uniform, and now it's for everybody. And well, you it, know what? It does sometimes feel very much like pretty. No, things. I didn't get as much <laughs> sex in the military as I got in prison. It's because you're too pretty for the navy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's a beautiful week. I, I hope everything's been going well for you. You look uh, you look refreshed. I am tired as hell. Really? Did you get a chance to listen to the last episode? I know you don't listen to episodes, no. but I'm going to tell you. But I did get us a new listener, so there's that. Who, who is the new listener? I don't even know his name. He's a guy that comes into Liberty, but he left his snacks one night, and I was telling and. And then I saw him walking to the ship and I was like, oh, my God, you left your snacks. Get in the car and I will take you back to get them because they were going underway. And he was like, oh, what are you doing this week? And I was like, oh, I'm recording my podcast with my buddy. And he's like, oh, you have a podcast. I was just downloading podcasts for our underway. And I was like, oh, well, this is it. T-Bone and Chick Brew. And he's like, oh, here it is. And he downloaded like six episodes. Super fan James had to drive. He had to uh, evacuate because he was in the path of Ian. So he had to drive up from Brunswick back to central Pennsylvania. He was here for a day or two and then immediately had to go back and reassume his studies. But he said <laughs> our episodes got him like the, the, the most recent episodes. I don't know how long he had been stockpiling. Got him from Pennsylvania almost all the way to South Carolina. <laughs> So we're there for you, buddy. And, we, and he may be stockpiling this episode for his ride back. Remember, eight is great, but and nine is fine. But, you know, when you go over 10, you're risking a chance. <laughs> I, I never pulled anybody over unless they were doing more than 10. Well, that's not true. If they were doing less than 10 miles over, uh, over the speed limit, but they weren't maintaining their lane, I would pull them over then. But for the yep. most part, nine is fine. Eight is great. But 
Ten or more. Coming for your door, son. I don't know, just making up those rhymes as I go. Just going for it. <laughs> Next Eminem. Everyone should feel blessed to be hearing these original lyrics. We didn't get any feedback. I, I don't think our uh, other super fan, Tegan, there, I don't think she paid enough attention to our, our request about her and the, the weird beard club there making a uh, promo for the hotline. But uh, since she didn't. Or she's ignoring us. <laughs> since she didn't, here's the kids. <laughs> You used to call me on my 904-385-3977 You used to, you used to It's the T-Bone and Chick-Brew I gotta redo that! Uh, oh. I'm, just, I'm just thinking of, this is, there's a lot of work involved here. I'm not really sure if I want a name change. <laughs> Just, you know, uh, uh, unofficially, the new the show's new name is Lunsby. But uh, officially, I'm not going back and redoing all Again, we have talented people in the listening audience. Somebody out there can make us some bumper music. Somebody out there can do some artwork. I mean, the only artwork that we've gotten so far is from Superfan James, and that's when you were locked up in Morocco. <laughs> oh, let's not talk about that. Did, you did see that, right? I did. The, the I liked it. And then I was like, <laughs> wait, this is at my expense. This is less funny. Oh, come on. Cool. <laughs> the joke was you were in prison. That's hilarious. I was. I was. <laughs> I think... Two out of ten would not do again. <laughs> Two out of ten? That's still better. Zero I stars. I had all those electrolytes from the army and they were delicious. <laughs> Zero stars do not recommend. How about we move on to something I'm excited to talk about? It's time to talk about cooking. And tonight prove one thing. You know f*** all. The infamous Gordon Ramsay with his motivational chat. <laughs> I, uh, I need to talk to you about the science of baking. Again, mm. ladies and gentlemen, Chick Brew is a certified, registered uh, emeritus, if you will. She is, she been to the school, she knows how to cook. She went to an actual school where there were tests involved. She got a piece of paper that said she passed the test. So when you have food questions, this is the kind of person you look to to ask questions because she's an actual chef, not a YouTube chef. But Ginger mm -hmm. Billy's still a very good chef. I like Ginger Billy. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the science of baking. Now, I sent you a picture of two penis rolls. Uh, <laughs> you sure did. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that it was supposed to be a nice loaf of Italian bread, but I ran into several difficulties. Okay, I'll tell you what I thought it was. Uh, I didn't realize it was Italian bread, other than our, our aforementioned look-alike situation. I thought you had made, like, a sausage roll wrapped in, like, some kind of phyllo dough or something. You know, like, a, I don't know. Yes, because that's, like that's, that's what a chef would think. That's what a chef would think. An ordinary person would just look at it and go, oh, you, you made some bread. Yeah, that's not what it looks like. So, number one, I missed one of the ingredients. Well, there is your problem. <laughs> <laughs> just start uh, with that. I, what ingredient? The vegetable oil. Mm. It's still not bad. First of all, the house smells amazing, which is the primary yeah. reason for making bread. So you can, you know, aromify the house. But uh, I put, I, I did a real good job with the yeast and the measuring and, and the timing and the proofing. I overproofed because I, I used the bread machine to do the dough process. Just, you know, put all the ingredients in there, hit the dough button and, and let it do its thing. I was following directions that may not have been made for a bread machine because I had a, uh, an, a massive amount of dough that overflowed the container inside the bread machine. So my bread machine requires an extensive, extensive clean out. <laughs> and I didn't, I don't really have the counter that I need to do bread work here. I don't have a good counter for that. We do have a rolling accessory there in the kitchen with a nice flat top on it. I normally cheat and lay down plastic wrap and then I, yeah, I work the bread on top of the plastic wrap so it makes for easier cleanup. But apparently we ran out of plastic wrap, so I tried using aluminum foil in its steed. Bad idea. Yeah, I just, the technical, the technical aspects of it are the things that, first of all, did you, you didn't have any parchment paper? No, no, we don't, we're not parchment paper people. We don't really, I, I don't know people that I could go to if I had a parchment paper emergency. Like, I have some. Yes, I yes, but I, I couldn't go to you because you're six hours away. 
in, a, in an emergency situation to get parchment paper. I'm, I'm, I'm not one of those you people. You go to the store. Yes, yes. And then I would have yeah, to yeah. ask for directions. Plastic wrap and parchment paper. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to the store. I was making this daggone bread. Now, I still make bread, and it's not that bad. It's not that bad. I There was no ingredient on the list for salt, and I really feel like it should have had some salt. But the, yeah. the recipe I was looking at didn't have any salt in the ingredients. It did have that vegetable oil that I forgot to put in, but I still made Which bread. Which is also weird to me. What's that? That it didn't have salt? No, that well, that it didn't have salt and that it called for vegetable oil. Why would you put vegetable oil in dough? I wouldn't. <laughs> I don't know where you got this recipe from. Same place everybody gets every recipe these days, somewhere online. First thing that popped yeah. up. Yeah. So Don't use that one again. <laughs> it's <bread. laughs> hey, but it's, I, it's like flour, yeast, baking soda, maybe baking powder, whatever, some water, maybe an egg if it's getting really fancy. I, I, I did uh, I did not have to use any baking powder, or baking soda, or salt. I see that because that's there was no leavener in that bread. So thought, you proofed it for size, which is the yeast doing its thing, but it didn't rise, which is why you have that weird saggy, <laughs> <laughs> that weird crouton in the middle. You got like one crouton in the middle of it. I may put that up on the fan page and just uh, <laughs> see, you know, get get people's guesses on what this could possibly be. <laughs> Look at this loaf of bread with its own crouton in the middle. <laughs> it's not yeah, bad. I, I, send me that recipe. I just want to take a gander and see what who came up with that. Uh, I will. I will send that to you. I'm interested. Okay. I, I, it's on my list of things to do. And I, I'm in, in my list of things to do is my next thing is to ask you about your cooking lately. What have you done? I am actually, this is my break from a wild few days of cooking. Oh, tell us about um, it. I am doing, I'm doing a promotion for my business. It's pumpkin spice season. People love pumpkin spice. So I just made, uh, I made pumpkin spice marshmallows just now. Um, I'm making some uh, pumpkin spice cinnamon rolls. Got those in the work. I'm doing little tiny pumpkin pies, personal pumpkin pies, and I'm doing a pumpkin bread. And then to use up some of my extra marshmallow bits, I am making, hopefully if I can find some of the things I'm looking for, I'm looking for like paper cups. Who knew that you couldn't find like Dixie paper cups anywhere on the base? (laughs) Do you ever think about just uh, origami some uh, parchment paper? I might, actually. So <laughs> there's that. But I'm going to do some, um, you know, everyone is like making the hot chocolate on the sticks, but I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to do um, a, like a latte. So you heat up your milk and it's got a, a chocolate outside. It's got coffee on the inside, some marshmallows on top. When you stir it around in your milk, you have a little mocha latte. Everything that you have been working on sounds relatively normal. The thing that got my most attention was the thing you said first. I didn't <laughs> know people outside of the industry could make marshmallows. Everyone Not only make marshmallows. marshmallows, but flavor marshmallows. Yeah. How do you make... I don't know if I want to go down this rabbit hole, because if I find out how to make marshmallows, or as my friend Joey used to call them, mashmallows. Smallows. If I uh, learn the best how to part make... is, is before you let it sit in to form a marshmallow, you basically just made an entire mixer bowl full of marshmallow fluff and whatever flavor you want. And I have to tell you, it is the best spatula you'll ever see in your life. <laughs> how do you make marshmallows? <laughs> it's super easy. Tell me. It's just... Sh- you can do... All I'm sugar, so excited. sugar and corn, corn syrup, <laughs> um, and you just heat up the sugar. Basically, you're heating up sugar until it gets to about two forty two to two forty five temperature wise. They call it a soft, soft ball. Like if, if you were to let it, if you're making candy and you're going to make a hard candy, you'd heat it up hotter because you're kicking out more moisture. If you are making a soft, chewable candy like you would in a marshmallow, the stringiness. You're going to go for 242 to 245. After that, you're going to pour it into a bowl that has had some gelatin blooming in it. To do that, you just take packets of gelatin and some water, let it get all soft. Once your sugar is hot, you slowly drizzle it in while your mixer is going. Add in whatever flavor you want or no flavor. But I put vanilla and uh, pumpkin spice extract in mine. And then you put it in a in a baking dish lined with parchment paper <laughs> and and powdered sugar you put like a base powder sugar down on top of your parchment paper you pour your marshmallow fluff in on top and then you sift some more 
powdered sugar on top and you let it sit for like six hours. So basically you got like a a, a flat cake of marshmallow fluff. Right now, yes, I do. Have, and it sits for my, six hours. Just sits, yep. Now you take it and the parchment paper out and then you got to do some serious knife work. I'm going to use a, a cookie cutter. I'm going to make little tiny circles, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you have use a, a knife, tiny, you can use scissors. You have a what? tiny cookie cutter? I do. Well, it's a circle. I have a, a food All board. right. I, I am interested in seeing pictures of this process. <laughs> Because I did I mean, not know. Then you could do whatever you want. You could like make different colors. You can make. You could put in whatever you want. Yeah, it sounds like a blast. It sounds like something I really want to do. But again, I didn't know you could make marshmallows. Yeah, totally. <sighs> Game changer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, I did. You ever read my breakup letter? My little breakup notification. Oh yeah, <laughs> with Korean food. <laughs> So I, I'm done. I'm, I'm done being adventurous with food. I'm going to stick to the things I know. Huh? This is, this is just sugar. And it's just, just marshmallows. Yeah. It's just sugar and gelatin. They already come in powdered forms. They live on a shelf. It would, it would, there's no egg. There's no, there's no protein. There's. Yeah. I was surprised I didn't put egg in the bread dough, but I did use egg wash, uh, egg white wash, or is it just. Is egg wash and egg whites, are they synonymous? Are they the same thing? No. Egg, you're, it look like part of it looks... Good. Yeah. And it doesn't taste bad, especially when you put a little butter on it. It looks a little dry. Yeah, that butter would help. Yeah, but there's no... Oh, don't worry. When she gets home, she'll critique it quite well, oh, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Hey, you know, last week we talked about uh, John Cena, and if you would have listened to last week's episode, I did a real good job of putting his intro music in before we talked about him. Uh, It was fun. I enjoyed last week's episode the way it came out. Are you going to record the critique from the producer, and then we can talk about that next week? Because I would love that. (laughs) And then you could give her some intro music. (laughs) What? What? How much trouble do you want me to get in? Because you know I will pick the they don't worst. Listen. I will pick they don't the worst. Wor- true, true story. <laughs> but I, I would pick the safe. worst intro music. <laughs> oh. In my head, I was hearing the like uh, Job music. But then you know the <laughs> the final countdown. The, yeah, but the, you know like the reel where it like goes into the sad recorder. <laughs> I don't think I want to do that to myself. <laughs> Although it may be entertaining for the audience, I don't know if I want to do that to myself. I want you. Well, then I I might. We'll see. But then I would have to like you know prep her and let her know. Hey, be vicious. I recorded you without yeah, your yeah, I, I'm recording you. Be vicious. <laughs> She's yeah, not going to like it. That's a lot of respect there. I she's, love that. She's not going to like it. She never likes anything I make, and I make it for her. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, we are talking about John Cena setting a Guinness Book of World Records. We had a little fun with that. You said in last week that in the headlines section, there was going to be something about the Guinness Book of World Records, and then we completely skipped the news because I don't have an intro for the news. Uh and those intros are what keys me on things we need to do. So once again, as I've said every day this year, I have got to come up with an intro for the news. And now it is time for headlines from around the globe. Ba-da-da-da-da. All right, let's get <laughs> now that we have completely gone off the rails. And thanks to the wonderful job of editing, no one will know the wiser. What do you have any headlines uh, for me? <laughs> Guinea pig performs 16 tricks in 10 minutes. Or, let me start over. Guinea pig performs 16 tricks in a minute to break record. Okay. (laughs) There's, oh, oh, goodness gracious. A guinea pig performs 16 tricks in under a minute. The... The only place I could go with this is, unfortunately, we've gotten to a place in time where guinea pigs are out turning tricks. Where guinea pigs are having sex for money, which is commonly referred to as turning a trick. And this this poor guinea pig was so far down on its luck that it had to turn around 16 tricks in less than a minute. I've heard, and I may have seen with my own eyes, that when it comes to guinea pig copulation, they're, they're, they're not really they're not into it for the long haul these are these guys are uh, not even a three pump chump they're like a a one pump chump so but but to line up the 16 tricks 
to the one guinea pig whore, I think is the biggest trick. And then to run them through one after the other as quickly as possible. They, you know, they used to have a thing called a flea circus, but I guess this is the Amsterdam version of the flea circus, except it's a guinea pig sex uh, circus. That's the only way I could have possibly went with that headline. Yeah, because that's exactly guinea pigs. Where I thought you would go with it, that headline. That's exactly where you thought I was going to go. I did. <laughs> <laughs> also, I just like how is that news? And also, yeah, there's just so much. Like, no. where did this start? Like sometimes when people are like, "Ah, oh, Guinness Book of World Records," and I, I'm in it, and I'm like, "What? You're the only person doing this? Of course you're." <laughs> Have you? Uh, uh, there is a YouTuber, Ali Spengoli. She started off and she was doing these like really fun rewrites of popular music, and I thought they were fantastic. But then she also started doing kind of like you know attention grabber things where she painted her whole car in chia seeds so it was like a giant chia pet and so like there it's fun but it then people were like oh you should do, be in the guinness book of world records well now she's like super into getting into the guinness book of world records and she's got like even weirder things but i'm just like you're the only person doing this like that's not that's not competition <laughs> uh and that that sound you just heard is why I'm getting a new microphone, because I hear it on the top end. But microphones are expensive, and I don't really want to spend a lot of money, so I put it on my wish list in case somebody's looking. The fast, uh, here we go. This is uh, 11 truly bizarre Guinness World Records. Truly bizarre Guinness World Records. There are 11 of them in this article. Okay, I don't know what a pram is, so I'm stumped by the first one. What's a pram? Uh, it's like I think it's like a like a baby carriage. Yeah, of course, uh, the pram. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fastest it's half like marathon run while pushing a pram. The most toilet seats broken by so by someone's head in one minute. Wait, how? Who started that? Rupert wants to know. He's right here. He's <laughs> best to know. The who most that? rotations hanging from a power drill in one minute. The like happiest. that was an accident. Someone like messed up, and they're like, "I've never been around that many times before." And they're like, "You're right. I'm gonna try to get me some money." And then <laughs> the heaviest weights lifted by unexpected body parts. Nope. For example, the record for heaviest lift, a weight lifted by the tongue, is 28 pounds. Is it Joe Lifto? I don't know who that is. I do know who this. <laughs> so that, I guess that's a fun joke that the rest of us will just not be in on. The longest duration full body contact with ice. Shouldn't David Blaine own that? Didn't he spend like four days? <laughs> spent a total of three hours and 28 seconds covered in this stuff. I think I think David Blaine earns that one. The fastest time to burst three balloons with the back. The most watermelons chopped on the stomach in one minute. What? The most t-shirts removed while heading a football. The most steps taken by a dog balancing a glass of water. <laughs> The loudest purr by a domestic cat. And the 11th of the most insane and silly Guinness Book of World Records, the longest distance pulled by a horse or car while on fire. I have kind of lost all respect for the Guinness Book of World Records. Number one, have you seen, have you seen one? It's, they're ungodly thick. They're really thick books. Well, because apparently anything is, All right. is okay. So what's like it going to any... be for you? What world record can Chick Brew set? If given the opportunity, I could snuggle the most beagles. Oh. of that because I love them so much. <laughs> we could line them all up like little guinea pigs and each one could come to you for a quick hug. Little he, could, he could turn tricks with bagels. Uh, Take it back. <laughs> <laughs> Unsay so, it. So you got the, uh, yeah, but I mean, the only thing preventing you from getting that record is your access to a large amount of beetles. Beagles. Beagles. Beagle, beagles. So, but I said Joe Lifto, right? We're talking about records. Uh, Joe Lifto is a uh, oddities performer. Uh-huh. And he he lists, you know, kegs with his earlobes, his tongue, his nipples, just hooks them right on and lifts them. This is a guy. This is a guy who's got some Guinness World Records. Yes. A bartender in Austin, Texas at Casino El Capone. Good guy. Oh, they have casinos in Austin. No, it's just called Casino El Capone. I hate when they do that. It's been on a diver's diet. What is it? Diners, drive-ins and dives. If you watch the episode in Austin, you'll see a very young chick brew. Oh, uh, eating a hamburger with a big afro. 
<laughs> so uh, hold on, we're gonna put this on the website. This diner driver and diners drive in and dives with uh, good old Schmuckatelli. Right? Are you my buddy? That's uh, Guy Fieri, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and the name of the place is some casino something. What? Casino El Camino. Oh, that's Rupert. Yeah. El Camino. <laughs> Tell me what you know about um, magnetic necklace thingies. See that? Oh, yeah. So, uh, I don't know why. I just thought it would be a good idea. It's easier for putting and taking on and taking off my necklace. You got another headline for me? I sure do. Nervous wandering chicken caught at U.S. Pentagon security checkpoint. We've already done this. Did we? I don't yes. think we did. Yes, we did. Yes. Yes, I, I did what the whole it? bit. It's a Chinese chicken. It's a spy. I did all that. Oh, you did. You're trying to recycle headlines for our audience. They don't appreciate your lack of effort. Just like the regular news. That's me. I'm just embracing <laughs> my, my craft. <laughs> uh, look, it doesn't take much. NewYorkPost.com. Oh, his New York man charged with putting several reptiles in his pants. <laughs> So Josh Robert Thompson is a very funny man, and I enjoy him immensely. He, amongst other things, uh, he, he works on Family Guy, but uh, most of us know him or got to know him through his work on the Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson. He was the, ro the gay robot skeleton named Jeff Peterson. Jeff Peterson would say things like, balls. And it would just be funny. And uh, another one of his phrases that he would say often was, in my pants. And uh, so you got a New York City man putting a bunch of snakes down his pants. Is that how I'm reading that headline? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which in New York City is something we call um, Tuesday. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know how that's a headline. It's just New York. And New York is never, never anything uh, that you wouldn't expect it to be. You see... Every day, the craziest of things. Recently, there was an attack on the subway where they got video of a bunch of young women dressed in... The Green Goblins! The Green Goblins, <laughs> dressed in leotards, robbing people. All I, all I was thinking was like, green screen that! Green screen that! <laughs> <laughs> and that is something we call Wednesday. Because every day in New York, I, for whatever reason, I was, I was doing something that did not require me to be engaged. I had to move a bunch of files from one thing to the next. I really couldn't do anything until until that was completed. So, you know, I'm sitting there at the computer. I, I look at places where I used to live. And I, <laughs> I had heard that a place I used to live in Brooklyn had changed immensely. So I was just doing some Google mapping, just taking a tour of the old neighborhood. And I was surprised in, in many, many ways uh, because, wow, it has changed a lot. Some of the buildings are still there. Some of the buildings are not there. There are businesses where there were never businesses. The giant building that was filled with crackheads is now an actual building with like people living in it and it looks really nice. It's very strange going back in time. But on that corner, I remember someone getting murdered at the intersection, thrown out of a car, and I remember the reaction of two gay crackheads. I remember their reaction to the body being thrown out of the car more than I remember anything else about that particular day because it was just so over the top hysteria. You know, granted, you know, if a body gets thrown in front of your feet, there should be some reaction. But the level that they took it to was so far beyond. It was it was the most memorable part of that day. I remember a guy on a... What was the reaction? You can't just move on. Oh, I couldn't. I, um, you could. You I, could. I, 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 I can't do it justice. It was yelling. It was screaming. It was... Uh, it was... Uh, pantomiming, pantomiming, yelling, screaming. I mean, it was a dead body. I feel like you got the hand gestures down. <laughs> <laughs> Just flailing about over there. <laughs> and, and, and it was a lengthy, it was a lengthy show of hysteria 
between the two of them, neither of them bent down to try to help the guy or anything. They was just running around and just just going off about what had happened in front of them was the more memorable thing. If I ever have the ability to recreate that on a, in a, in a, in a video, so nothing has changed is what I've heard. I've heard that it, had they had phones, they probably would have been filming. So literally nothing has changed. Oh, yeah. But this is the same corner I almost got murdered on. And it was the reason I had to leave. It was definitely the reason I left. Because uh, that was that was going to be the end of my existence. Just just going to the little Puerto Rican store around the corner. You know, we call a bodega to get, you know, yep. some things. And I almost got, almost got murdered on the way back. You've told me that story before. Yeah, and my na- my neighbors were just watching. They were just going to watch me get murdered. And uh, but for the but grace of I, God, when I was watching the the Green Goblins. I was like, this is so New York that when they were like, I was reading about the mom, and she's like, and no one helped. And I was like, to be honest, <laughs> if I saw that on the subway in New York, I would be like, oh, it's not real. Yeah, who's got all right? <laughs> who's course, got you know, the like, camera? I, I, like. The fact that, like, the, the you're at 42nd Street, where were the police? Like, normally at 42nd, there's police everywhere. All How the did time. they get away? It was a long <laughs> video. It was, like, six minutes. And I was like, in what New York station, other than the last stop at any station, not 42nd, are the doors open for six minutes? And you not have literally everybody. Like, I just don't see... I was like, oh, well, this is long. So this is obviously some kind of performance art that I don't understand. But it it makes me feel like the the reptile in the pants guy is just also something like, is there video? I I mean, it's just, yeah, it's a Tuesday. It's just, how is that a headline? Crazy man in New York does crazy thing. The charges, the maximum sentence is 20 years in prison with the maximum fine being two hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars. He put these snakes in his own pants. Yeah, in but he was pants. on a bus. Okay. So if the bus, they say, if he had taken them out through Canada, then it would have been an issue. Burmese python. How many? Three. Wow, this sounds like some African thing, you know. <laughs> I don't know that it's African. Uh, his first name is Calvin. Calvin. Wow. I can't pronounce his second name, so it could be a literally anything. <laughs> How do you put three constrictors in your pants? Why would you? I feel like that's really the Well, question. I mean, that one, risky, one you know, you're risky. trying to impress the ladies. And, and you want but three? You want, but no three? woman is going to be like, three sounds like a <laughs> good idea. Yeah, like... <laughs> No, three is too many. <laughs> three is too many. We agree. Two is too many. One, understandable. Yeah, I feel like I feel like two is an oddity and maybe a novelty. <laughs> so the potential, the potential of going to prison is because of what he was smuggling, literally smuggling them. Yeah, I think that's what they're saying. He was going to smuggle them across the Canadian border into Canada. Yeah. I feel well, like that's like probably the riskiest way to smuggle anything into Canada. On the, on, Just throwing on the, these snakes in the pants. How tall is he? Like, <laughs> these are not small snakes. They're big. How big were the snakes? And again, I have questions. constrictors. <laughs> so even, yeah, even yeah. if they're small. Maybe he just thought they would hold on to for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to worry about them slipping out the bottom of my pant leg. <laughs> and holding on. He was uh, he was acting suspicious when uh, when he uh, when uh, investigators asked him his name. He said he, he spoke in an octave that was unreachable by most humans. <laughs> My Burmese python don't want none unless you got. <laughs> That, uh, Terrible. That so is a, that headline. That there is a go. dumb, dumb person. <laughs> 36, too. <laughs> I feel like you should know better by then. You should know better. But, and, and the benefit of taking those snakes to Canada is there, there's not a real good chance that they're going to survive there. Canada Ooh. doesn't have a lot of snakes <laughs> because it's cold and uh, snakes don't like cold. But if he took them down to Miami, they'd be in the swamp. You see some of the sizes of these things they're pulling out of the swamps? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> No. That's hilarious. And today I saw a thing about sea wolves, actual wolves who on the uh, British Columbia Islands do most of their fishing for food. Wolves in the no, water you. making kills. No. <laughs> you know what time it is? Times they are changing. I disagree. <laughs> 
It's time for the book of everything. The book of everything, well, if you haven't learned something in today's episode, the book of everything is our last chance to teach you something that you did not know before. We usually pull two facts out, uh, and they're pulled at random. Leo Tolstoy's wife wrote out the drafts of war and peace for him in longhand six times. If you've never read War and Peace by Tolstoy, it's a very large book, lots of writing. And she wrote that book six times by hand. How did he survive? How did he Wait, make her do it? She wrote it or he wrote it? She uh, wrote out the drafts of War and Peace for him. Uh -huh. Man, that's a team effort right there. Yeah. She did it in longhand and she did it six times. That's Yeah. And that she should have gotten some credit in that book is what I am seeing. <laughs> Oh, here's she wrote it more. She wrote she wrote it more than he did, literally six times more. Than he did. Here's a fun fact, and, and I'm going to read it because it starts with the word Zeus. Oh, how, Zeus. How many wives did Zeus have? Three. Five. One of them was his aunt, and another was his elder sister, and a oh, third he's one. From Alabama. And a third one he ate. He did eat. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Zeus had five wives. One was the aunt, was the elder sister, and a third one he ate. Tolstoy's wife wrote out War and Peace six times in longhand. Those are your uh, facts from the Book of Everything for this week. Moving. And don't forget that humans and elephants are the only animals with chins. Still in there, still driving crazy. <laughs> I still can't forget it. <laughs> I talk about it at least once a week. You should. <laughs> it's interesting stuff. And now it's time for... Not invited. It's time for Birthday Boost. Every week, Chick Brew picks two. I pick two of our friends who are having birthdays, and we boost them beyond repair with uh, many, many uh, accolades. Many, many stories of accolade stuff. That's what we do. And uh, and if you do not make the, honor, uh, the birthday boost, then you could be an honorable mention. And the way you go from being a poor, lonely little honorable mention to being a birthday booster... Or a person who is birthday boosted, the way you do that, well, you participate in the show. And you, you comment on the fan page, and you call into the hotline. You do, you do show-like stuff to get, to get boosted, uh, or, or send money. We, we also accept cash. I have a yeah. very short list this week. I have Venmo. <laughs> I have a very short list this week, and I think... At least two of them we share. So as always, you get to go first. Who is your birthday boost? Well, I'm pretty sure that you're probably going to say this one person, one of the per people that we share. So I'm going to, <laughs> we'll talk about them together. <laughs> but I have two aunts that have birthdays. This two aunts? Two aunts. My Aunt Karen and my Aunt Vicky. And my Aunt Karen is the one that I always go visit when I'm in New York. Uh -huh. She lives over in Jersey. Love her to death. She is my godmother. And my aunt Vicky, like being down an in aunt Texas. wasn't enough. She had to be your aunt and your godmother. Yeah, I I require a lot of attention. A little bit of an overachiever. She is. She's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> um, and my aunt Vicky down in Texas, also having a birthday. So happy birthday to both of them for putting up with me for my whole life. They have known me my whole life. Bless them. All right, uh, I I'm gonna go with Angie O'Brien. So, uh, me and my friend, my, uh, my friend Jacobo, Jack O'Brien, uh, we worked together many years ago in Kings Bay, Georgia. I consider him one of my closest, nearest, and dearest friends. Trust that man with my life many times over. I trusted him so much with my life, I let him shoot animals across my body. And somehow I was okay with that until later when I realized that was not okay. I should not have. <laughs> but it's not about Jack. It's about his lovely wife, Angie. So they have a crazy love story where they were together and then they went away from each other for a very long time. And they got back together. And I've never seen him happier. She, she takes good care of him. She's an amazing chef. She uh, opened up a business, a restaurant in a former Geico. I was there. I helped paint the Geico off the wall, and they are now running the 19th hole, I believe it's called, or no, uh, the O'Brien's Bunker, I think it's called. It's at the golf course there in Kings Bay uh, on the Naval Base. 
they got a real good deal there working for MWR and, and making food for people. And they're uh, absolutely successful and they're wonderful people. I love Angie. I love Jack. And I, I miss seeing them as often as I used to see them. And, you know, uh, life is better when you have an Angie O'Brien in your life. That's that's my birthday boost. That's what I got to say about that. Do you want to hear something really terrible? Yes. It's actually all three of my aunts have birthdays this week. That's awesome. I thought my aunt Nikki was next week and I looked down and no, she's at the back end of this week. So, <laughs> well, it's all three of my aunts. Thank you for putting up with me. So I hope you Karen, have an amazing birthday week. Karen, Nikki, Karen, and who was the third aunt? Vicky, Vicky Nikki, and Karen. Man, these are... Uh... These, I, I bet you they partied. Oh, I, I bet. <laughs> You're like, oh, she's not here. Turn oh, it up. Turn I, it up. I bet they partied when they were young. hundred percent. A hundred percent. I, I'm going to, I'm going to give a birthday boost out to somebody who I don't even know if she needs a birthday boost. Jackie Knight has been the proprietor of some type of comedy club in the St. Augustine area for a very, very long time. She's, she's an amazing lady, and I, I have learned more since I've been away from that area about her and her life her, and her husband, Dion. They really do just have a, an amazing life, and it's fun to watch from the outside because as Jackie was growing up, she has all of these uh, old pictures with everyone who was ever famous growing up. It's an amazing I believe her profile is set to public, uh, set to public and, and I would encourage people, make Jackie Knight your friend and, and live vicariously, historically through Jackie and her photos. It is, I mean, it, it is amazing to see some of these photos that she has taken with people from a very early, early age all the way up until, and then, you know, a, a, a dance review and Dion was, they're a really amazing couple and an amazing life. And, and I am privileged to know her. And that is my second birthday boost of the week. How about into honorable mentions? Who you got? We going? know we got to do a joint one. Do we have to do a joint one? We got to do one for Steve. <laughs> all right so initially i saw him i'm like oh stevie let's do stevie and i was like no she's definitely gonna do stevie so i can't do stevie and then I, then I said that thing about us both having one and then i thought it was hilarious that neither one of us highlighted him with a birthday <laughs> boost uh also a fantastic person a fantastic chef uh some of the some of the best Honestly, some of the best food you can get in Rota, Spain, or in the in the greater Rota, Spain metropolitan area, is I'm over. Still the, waiting for him to do a ramen night, Stevie. Is over birthday, there at so Shamrocks. This month. <laughs> I've made some good commercials for him, and then he went and hired like some professionals to do professional commercials. I hope that worked out for you, brother, because I mine were free and made with love. He's like. Uh, 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 <laughs> He is the West Coast uh, chapter there. He's the, the West Coast chapter of the Hash House Harriers Bar. And uh, we have rewarded him with his own happy coat about that. Uh, he turned in 53. He's a great guy. A lovely family. Man, I can't imagine how big his kid is right now. He's just, a whole human. Just thinking back to the last time I seen that little child was a little child in his mama's arms. Yeah. And now she's like learning to cook at Steve's hip. Wow. All right. Yeah. Uh, who's with your honorable mentions? Oh, my honorable mentions are Alexandra Bergeron. We met in boot camp. I, I also uh, have an Alexander. I have Dion Alexander as one of my honorable mentions. <laughs> uh, Chris Lizio. Ah, uh, we share Porter. Chris too. You, uh, <laughs> Marcel Foster and Michael Saad. Uh, Michael Saad, who would always get in trouble every time we would go. He used to be on tour with me. Every time we would go into any airport, he would always be like, oh, I'll carry a Pelican case for you. Uh, and then he would always refer to the Pelican case as the bomb box. And he always goes, stop, like, stop saying the word bomb. We're going to go to Michael prison. Saad, we're all going to go to jail. John Anderson is one of my honorable mentions. You may remember John, may not. He was an MA2 with me there in Rhoda. Has since gone on to become an MAC. He's doing great things out there. Leroy Williams. That's right. He's the dog handler from uh, Rhoda that we worked with. The last two honorable mentions. I miss this man. He's He was my workmate. Uh, I've worked with him for years, and I have nothing but respect for Caetano Alcedo. Uh, I love him. Yes, Caetano. So uh, his, birth, 
His birthday's in a couple of days, uh, four days away to be exact. Why don't you stop in and wish him a happy birthday and tell him Tony says hi. He was thinking about him, too. And, I'm taking him a pie on Thursday. Oh, do that. Do that for a friend. He's been helping me with my car. He's helped me with all my cars. Who are we kidding? He's just amazing people. He's great people. He's, and he really is. finally, uh, wishing a happy birthday to our friend, author, comedian, fellow podcaster, uh, Danny Johnson. He's celebrating his birthday. Doesn't tell you what how many years he is, but I think we're pretty close in age. So uh, I know how old he is. Love Danny. Danny's good people. Those are all my honorable mentions. Did you get all yours in? Yep, I'm good. Yeah, we got our birthday boost in. We did the news. We did the book of everything. We talked about food. I, I'm slipping into a Howard Cosell there, which is a reference most people won't get soon. And we talked about changing the name of the show from the T-Bone and Chick Brew show to Lunds B with T-Bone and Chick Brew. Other than that, I think we captured everything this week there, boss lady. Yeah, I think we're good to go. Yes. Uh, another great episode. Another wonderful time hanging out with you and discussing the things that be. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoy the show. If you didn't enjoy the show, well, send your complaints to Chick Brew. If you enjoyed the show, send your compliments to me. <laughs> Perfect, because I don't respond. So, yeah, send them to me anyways. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I remind you today, as I remind you every day, be the best person that you can be. And if you were a great person today, be an even better person tomorrow. And don't forget that you are loved. And uh, Daryl McLean is going to take us out here with his uh, little promo for his show. Thank you for listening to T-Bone and Chick Brew. If you enjoyed that show, you should check out the Daryl McLean Show, independent media that won't reinforce tribalism. We have one planet and nobody's leaving, so let's reason together. You can find the Daryl McLean Show at the same place you actually listen to this show. Give it a shot. And remember, nine is fine. Yes, I did that little last bit there for, uh... Oh, I stopped the recording.